Hello there. My name is Elisa Souza. I am Conscientio Therapist, Conscientio Therapist here in OIC, International Organization of Conscientio, Conscientio Therapy. And today we will talk about Conscientio Singularity. So welcome to everyone. I hope you enjoy this lecture and feel free to make questions and talk to us by our chat, okay? So let's go on. Some important recommendation, OIC activities do not replace or eliminate potential medical or psychological needs. We recommend whenever it proves necessary to seek out qualified health professionals for the specific attendances credited by official boards. OIC does not indicate nominatively any specialist. So this is very important. We always bring this recommendation you have um, maybe some time to go to see a physician, a doctor, and or a specialist to see what's happening and to check your, your like health checkup and everything. So uh, this is very important. Okay, if you have some doubt about that, we are open to answer. Let's go on, please. And the disbelief principle, um, so do not believe in anything, not even in what we inform in this activity. Uh, we um, ask you to experiment and have your own personal experiences. The best is to perform personal, repeated and self-critical research on the topics under analysis. We always bring this disbelief principle that it's very important for you to experiment. You have to have your own experiences. We will talk about um, a lot of information here today, but you should uh, really think about them by yourself and, and be critical, okay? Um, this, is the, this is the most important part um, to uh, um, evaluate everything and see what really um, uh, really is important for you and what you really what really makes sense. Let's go on. The next one. And conscientiology is a new science created by Professor Dr. Valdo Vieira in the end of the 80s. And this science, the goal, the main um, uh, the concerning point of it is the consciousness. It's so it's me, you, um, spirit, self, as called in other, other knowledge uh, areas. And so the main point is to try to understand uh, who we are and what we are doing here in this life. What is this purpose of everything? And we have the conscientious paradigm that it's the base of this science. And conscientious therapy um, operate uh, based on this conscientious paradigm. So we will explain a little bit of it on the next slide, please. We have five pillars. The conscientious paradigm um, basically um, is fundamented in multidimensional, that is this reality that we live not just this in this dimension that we can touch, we can see. We are all experiencing a bunch, a lot of the other dimensions, and we change, exchange energy. Um, everything is happening all the time. We can give an example for that when we see uh, people that has al already left uh, this life, that has already uh, that is dead, okay, already dead. And this person, um, uh, we call conching, that is a conscious consciousness that is living here in this intraphysical reality. And we have the context, that is the conching that lives, that live in the um, uh, astrophysical. And in this astrophysical, there are a lot of different dimensions with different energies, different 
pattern, patterns of energy. And these things are happening all the time and it's very um, common um, to reach and to have contact with these different realities. We will explain um, sometimes here today in these lectures more things about this kind of exchange, this kind of relation that we are always having with these different dimensions. And, but it's very important to be aware that this is happening all the time and you should uh, be aware uh, who or what conscious, uh, context um, is around you. Is there a group of contexts that sometimes has some singul singularities with you? So this is the first pillar, the multidimensional. Uh, the second one here that we bring is bioenergetic. We have um, a bioenergetic um, living, we could say. The energies are surrounding us and they are passing through us all the time. Uh, this, this is very natural when you uh, went to a place with a lot of nature, um, like a sea, a forest, you feel the energies if you are aware to that, the bioenergies. And we have the energies of the consciousness too. So uh, that has a pattern that has, uh, everyone is always thinking, right? We, we don't stop to think. So we are always generating those scenes that we say, that is thoughts, sentiments, and energies. They are all, uh, all together, we put in this word, because um, it's uh, sum summarized this idea that when we think, we feel something, and we express with our energy. And so energies, we can feel in environments, different places that we go, we can feel in objects, um, and so in, in your house, you can feel all the time that too. And so this is a reality that we should uh, pay more attention because sometimes we are creating this reality with our energies. We have the third one here today that we bring is multivehicular. This is um, very interesting because we, we exist in this body, this physical body, but we have other bodies too. Uh, we study in divided in four bodies. We have the soma, that is this body that we can see and touch. We have the energosoma, that is the soma um, of, of uh, we can say that our energetic soma, the soma that has all our energies. And we have the psychosoma um, that is compiled by our sentiments, uh, things that we are feeling, producing all the time, this kind of things. And we have the mental soma, that is the soma of the ideas, uh, what we are thinking and producing with um, the way we, we think and organize our thoughts. So they are all together attached when we are awake, when we, in our daily life. But when we go to sleep, they deattach, and, and this is very physiological. And this deattach, uh, what, it ha what happened is that um, our psychosoma get out from the soma, and this energetic soma, the energosoma, will link one to other with the, with the um, uh, silver cord. And the psychosoma can go everywhere, sometimes, I don't know if you already had this experience, but sometimes we see something and when we wake up, we can um, turn on the TV and see something that happened and you just like, I was there. I saw that when I was, when I was dreaming. I had this experience before. Uh, I don't know you, but maybe sometime you had an experience that you just, um, you, could prove that before, uh, you could, um, sorry, you could prove that later, after that. You could just see that that thing happened and you was, you was there, you were, uh, you were there, sorry, before, right? 
So this is very interesting because sometimes we see things and we can um, prove that after that, when, when you, you, you said, I, I knew that, I saw that in your dream. So when, sometimes when this kind of thing happens, you're, you're not um, actually dreaming. You had a projection. And we studied this kind of phenomena too. Proje projections, they happen every night. Um, that's the importance of studying multivehicular. And we can have also a projection by mental soma. When the mental soma detached from psychosoma by the gold cord, okay? Golden cord. And let's go through here. We have a multi existential, another pillar on this paradigm, consciential paradigm. The multi, -exist multi existential is this um, reality that we, um, we are the result of several lives. We already, uh, we had uh, passed uh, through many, many lives with a lot of experiences, um, learning um, things, and um, we can say that this, this knowledge that we've been gained through lives. Now in this life, when uh, you, if you observe, sometimes we can see that we, that we know things that uh, it seems that we already knew. It's, it's very natural. Sometimes the person had this kind of experience in, in um, another life, a past life. And it's important to study the multi-existential condition because if we understand more about us, the way we function, we could say, the way we work, the way things happen to us, and, and the way we react, this tells a lot about us. And this has relation with several lives that we've been evolving. And sometimes we have a problem today that it's not from this life. It has come in from a bunch of lives, a lot of lives, and that things uh, tells tells um, much about you, okay? We have cosmoetics too. Cosmoetics, it's, it's an, a major ethic. Uh, this is um, a thing that uh, synthesize an, eth an ethic, we could say, that it's better for everyone. What is the, the better thing for all the kind of different principles of life? And when we try to understand what's better for everyone, we can talk about cosmoethics, that we consider this, all right? So it's a big, it's a very, like, it's a big thing that um, we are always trying to, to deepen our experiences and studies in cosmoethics. This is very interesting because uh, it um, involves the respect with one with other, we can respect more the other um, other person, other people, when we start understanding more this cosmoethics. So let's go on, please. So in the next slide here, uh, this is the it's a cycle of self therapy. We have four stages. We have the self-investigation, the self-diagnosis, self-confrontation, and self-overcoming. The self-investigation, that is the first stage of this cycle. Um, at first, I'd like to, just to make an introduction here that this cycle, um, it's, it's, the, um, uh, it's how conscientious therapy works. We, uh, when we do conscientious therapy, we can do the uh, self conscientious therapy and etero conscientious therapy. In OIC, by the attendances and consultations that we have here in OIC with the conscientious therapists, we have this hetero conscientious therapy. We help the person to, to, um, to do the self cure. We, we could say this way. There is not this, uh, 
it doesn't exist an hetero cure. The thing happens by self cure. And um, the, the first step is to know how does it work, this conscientious therapy, this self conscientious therapy, because the person, um, the person is going to learn how to do it, right? when start studying conscientious therapy. And the first step is to know how is this cycle, how these things works. So now we will explain. We have four steps when we are doing self-conscientious therapy. We have self-investigation, self the first step when consciousness start um, investigation, uh, his or herself, you can take a notepad and start listing everything that's happening with you, things that are bothering you, things that you feel that you need to evolve more, you think you have to improve in yourself to deal better with yourself and with the others. And this moment of self-investigation, you really will, will uh, get deep in, in yourself. You will um, highlight everything that, you know, you can't minimize anything so we will you will pay attention you'll be aware you will um uh, be your your investigation your investigation sorry you do the self-investigation as you uh, like an um, investigator okay of yourself after that when you have all this material you will compile everything in a self-diagnosis it's very important here to name it to put a name in what's happening with you. For example, the problem of pride or anxiety, um, maybe it's just the top of the iceberg, anxiety, for example, but sometimes, sometimes you have shyness. Um, there are several of the diagnoses. Uh, if you want to know more about this kind of thing and or the, the diagnosis and, and how to do it to, to really uh, enter in this self research and and really deepen in your in your things personal manners and everything we have um, in the end of the lecture we'll talk a little bit more but we have um, some we have articles mini articles on our website in English we have also our journal in English that is conscientotherapia. So we, I think in English is already not translated, but we have in Portuguese, if you have interest, if you are interested, and there are a lot of um, conscientotherapists and, and people that had already experienced the self therapy, the evolution, evolutions, we don't call patient, we call evolution, that is the person that really is uh, concerned about uh, self evolution, and so uh, you can see how the, how we are doing this, okay, by ourselves. How can we list everything, and how can we name it? We have a, a lot of techniques to do it to really get there. And now we go to the third stage, the self confrontation. In the self confrontation you will use these techniques that I already said. We have techniques that we can use to different moments of the cycle, but we have techniques that are very specific that can help you in that moment. And in the self-confrontation, uh, you uh, will really try to, uh, you, you are really prepared to do when you planned how to do, using techniques and everything that you try to, to do to, get rid of, of that. And um, it's a moment that it's important to be very decided, okay, to really get rid of it, to really solve the problem. And this intimate posture is very important in this moment. And you just can um, make this confrontation when you uh, really know, uh, really, um, or um, really dominate, we could say, this knowledge about yourself. It's very important to know because it's difficult to um, confront a problem that you, you sometimes, it's not very clear, okay? And so the last 
stage in self-conscientious therapy cycle is self-overcoming. It's when you feel that you have um, overcome the problem, maybe partially, but you have overcome it some, some, part of, some part of it. And this will release energy. You will feel stronger. And it's very good when you feel that you're solving something that is so important to you. And then we have, we can um, initiate again the cycle with another problem to solve another things. Okay, so this is a cycle. So let's go to next one, please. Today in this lecture, we have some topics that we'd like to to talk a little bit more. We have self investigation of personal singularities. We have assistential proxological pro targeting, use of personal strengths in self-confrontations. Let's go on, okay, to because we have our time here. So let's get in, into these topics. Uh, at first, I'd like to bring some quotes here. So this is from Verbit, uh, Assistential Singularity. The name of the verb, but I, uh, I wrote it. And so the existential singularity is the quality, property, or characteristic of the lucid consciousness in assisting others in a unique, uncommon, very personal way, amplifying self-cognition and evolutionary efficacy. This is interesting. I brought here today um, to start talking about uh, conscientious singularity. I brought this uh, uh, this existential singularity that um, my research about this this uh, theme started when I started thinking about that, and this is very interesting. When we uh, we start to observe how unique, how very singular we are, when we are helping someone, making an uh, I am um, making an assistance to someone or assisting someone. Uh, when we see that, this tells a lot about us. This sometimes you um, you do that thing in in your way. I can help someone with a problem, talking to that person, and sometimes another person enters in the scene and start talking using maybe different words with a different energy, and sometimes the impact the the result of that, it's, it's, it's like it's definitely better for that person because um, they have singularities or um, their energy uh, matched better. They feel, um, you know, some, these things happen. And I started observing that. And when we, when we amplify the self-condition, observing how we assist, um, it's interesting because this will help with this your evolutionary efficacy. You will start thinking what is better, how can I make this uh, approach better? And this helps you and the other one that is in front of you. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, another quote here. The first, sing first singularity of life is the consciousness itself. Nobody is equal. We are diversified experience centers, evolving individually with participation in affili affiliated groups. This is from the um, uh, arguing dictionary, I could say this way, of conscientiology. We already, um, we haven't translated um, yet, but uh, we bring here uh, a quote from Professor Valdo that, uh, it's very interesting when we start thinking about that nobody is equal. And we evolve individually, but in group as well. And I, I brought this today to think a little bit with you here, that it's interesting when we start thinking about that, because uh, when we we when we start to, to understand that we exist in group, we can, um, we can improve our traits, our way to do, to deal with things, because this is, this will go, going to help our existence, right? 
because we have to evolve and we evolve, evolve individually. But with the group, this group that has uh, that is, sing, is, is like have, has the similarity similarities with us. So when we um, we improve ourselves, we can give more. We can we can give a better person. We could say this way by ourselves to the others. We can be more. Um, um, we can be more open to the assistance as we are more homeostatic in our singularity way of functioning. And so we are more prepared to evolve together. Um, the conflicts will tend, tend to be, uh, tends to, um, to, to not to be so more not important, tends to, to uh, get smaller and we will start dealing better with this group. In the next one, I, I will explain more this kind of idea. Let's go to the next one, please. Uh, every consciousness has a percentage of singularity concerning the cosmos. Here in this quote from Valdo Vieira too, um, it shows this kind of importance that we have uh, in the universe. We are a component of the universe. And so by that, we can say that we, um, uh, we help, we are helping in, the, um, uh, in the, the, this configuration of the cosmos. We are a new unit of energy, like a point of light that um, is participating, it, uh, that really helps, that really uh, makes, that really this um, make the difference, okay? Because uh, it's, it's kind of, I'm trying to, to be clear in, in the idea that I'm having here, but it's, it's something that is difficult sometimes to put in words because um, we, are all, we are all in an, in an energy net connected. It's just kind of, the, uh, we could, could uh, make this analogy. We are a net of energy and we are all connect. And so every point counts. Right, so, so a person in Africa today, in there having that day that this person is having there, has connection with me, with you. The person that is now in Australia, in Europe, United States, Asia, all of us, we are all connected. And here we are talking just about our the, the earth, but we have the universe. So we are all connected with all different kind of principle of life and um, with the in this dim dimension okay this dimension and with other dimensions in a multi-dimensional existence so it's a lot of relation with everyone and everything so you are not alone all right this is the first thing that we can say by that we are connected not just here in this lecture but we all have relations. So let's go on to the other one. And um, uh, more one here from Dr. Valdo Vieira. Singularities, every coaching must evaluate itself carefully by the conscientiogram to identify among other traits of its own personality, any positive singularity that is has, it has not yet detected and kept idle. There are many consciousnesses with un unidentified homeostatic singularities. Um, and now uh, I think uh, it's uh, very important in, uh, by reading this quote that we should assume our resp uh, responsibility um, our responsibility uh, that uh, by using our strong traits, we have strong traits and we have the weak traits. And we can, by reading this quote, I could say that uh, we have a lot of good things that sometimes are not discovered yet. 
are not exercised by us yet. And that can help a lot. That can help to deal better with problems that sometimes we have, things that are still, we could say, bottlenecks, okay, in our evolution, things that are really uh, making difficult, uh, make it, making it difficult in our days. And maybe sometimes we have a lot of good things that are not already already uh, discovered by, by us, not already really, uh, is not already, already clear and sometimes idle, okay? And here we should really uh, pay attention and really um, be more aware about that, about ourselves, to try to, to see uh, these homeostatic singularities that we have and start expressing them. We have um, an important, um, I could say that we have a, an important role in the evolution of our group. And it's very important to know uh, which, is, which group is this one that we, we really have, uh, we re really are responsible to assist. There are people that um, are very similar to us, that had problems that are very similar to our problems that sometimes we already face it. A lot of things that we have experienced and we are uh, ready to help them. Um, so I think this is very interesting and important to start thinking about. Let's go to the next one, please. So uh, now I, su I suggest to, to get started here in those topics that we, we brought. So let's start with self-investigation, focusing in our singularities. Uh, it's, um, you, so in this, um, in this topic, we could say that it's interesting to focus on your conscientious footprint. What is this? Is the energetic trace, we could say. The footprint um, of the consciousness is something that happens when you go to a place, for example, and uh, people uh, perceive that you pass pass it through you you pass it through that uh, you went there okay before. They are like, oh, this feel this. Oh, you can went to, for example, a restaurant, and a couple just had an, a discussion, argued, and had some time like bad time there and had problems there, conflict. And you enter that restaurant and, and, you, and you just feel, oh, this place is not okay, let's go to another restaurant. Sometimes it can be in this, by this way, by this, this example. And this, is, uh, uh, this reflects this energetic trace. We, all, we are always um, producing this kind of energetic trace. That is the information that comes by uh, by the energy of a person, our energy. So this makes uh, you, you, me, everyone responsible for what we are generation, generation, right? We can think here too in this very personal singularities in self investigation. These propensities in multi, multi millennial appetites. Scoop oh, sorry. Uh -huh. So uh, this, what is this? This propensities and this appetites, sorry, appetites. They are, they are things that we, sometimes we like to do or sometimes they, uh, things that reveal the way we do, things that we like, things that we are always choosing when we have to, to make a, uh, uh, to make a decision. Uh, so uh, they tell a lot about us. These, these propensities, these appetites we can see in our house, for example, in your bedroom, things that you really like to collect sometimes and put together and things that, that express the way you think, the way you feel. We can buy things that express this kind of thing. And if you look uh, further a little more, you, you can see that um, 
everything is about that. Our house, the way you, we choose the color, the way you, we choose what we are going to eat, what we are going to dress. These kind of things tells, uh, tells, tells a lot about us. They are always, always giving information. And this, we are talking think about things that we can touch, we can see, as we said before, in this intraphysical. Now try to think uh, further, further that we have the multi multidimensionality. So we have energy, we have other contexts that can feel that, can, 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 can really um, exchange energy with you by that, by that object, by that thing, by that thing that you have chosen, okay? We have the uh, assistance bias. That uh, is basically what I already uh, said before. That is the way you do assistance. How, um, if you try to observe a little bit, you can see what, how, how uh, do I usually assist? Uh, am I more talkative? Or am I, um, uh, um, I exercise the listening more when I'm trying to help someone? Do I listen more or do I talk more? Or do I uh, just um, start uh, using my energies at the beginning of this talk and try to do an assistance by my energies? Uh, this is something that really will give you information too. Remember that we are doing here self-investigation of the singularities. So we have everything of every one of this, these things that we already said, they will give information about you and you start, you can start noting that, oh, I have the singularities, these things happen with me, I'm just this way, this is so me. We have the conscientious mechanism, mechanisms that are the attitudes and consequences that we think that we do and how we act. So we are always producing these attitudes and consequences. Sometimes this um, is so repetitive. Uh, if you try to look a um, little more of how do you function, how things happen with you, you will see that, that sometimes you have a, a way to do things that happens in your, in your work, um, at home, okay, with your family, with your friends. Things uh, tends to be a little re repetitive, we could say, because it's the way we know how to do, the way we... Uh, um, the way we exchange affection, all right? And we have singularities and evolutionary personal group that we talked a little bit before too today. That is the, this thing of this, this personal, this evolutionary personal group. We have, we are evolving in group. So we will have similarities, sometimes annoyances, and this is very natural and is in, in very important here to, de-dramatize, okay? Um, things uh, sometimes will be very good and very easy, but some, sometimes will be hard. And we should be prepared for that, right? And this is a very uh, important binomial. The admiration disagreement binomial. That is when you you can admire that person, but not necessarily you need to agree with, with him or with her. It's okay, right? To, you can like the, that person, you can really um, be fond of, but sometimes you will not agree and that's all right. So this is a, a it's, to demetrize, de demetrize the situation too. And we have this assistential group that we already talked before too. That this group that uh, has relation to us that, and that we are, we are already uh, okay, we are already prepared to deal with, to make this assistance. 
sometimes things that was harder for you in the past, but now you can deal, deal with this kind of problem. So you are prepared to help people that have this kind of problem. And if you, if you are aware, you will see that this kind of problem, people, uh, this kind of people with this kind of problem, uh, will come to you. Okay, life and this mechanism of evolution, the evolution, uh, evolutionary mechanism, mechanism is just this way. Uh, so let's go on, please. Now let's talk about praxis. Um, the ex existential uh, program that we uh, already planned for us. Uh, I will explain more about this, this proexis, but first let's talk about this, the singular self-diagnosis. Self-diagnosis is, uh, in, in my vision, I think it's very um, uh, related to proexis. So when we do this, how, how we do the self-diagnosis? As we said before, we have to compile, we have to summarize everything of our, our self-investigation and try to, to, get, to get there in a word and something that we really, that really um, tells what's happening to you. Uh, the problem is this, okay? Um, and it's very uh, important to try to figure out the conscientious bottlenecks Things that really stucks yourself, things that really that's really um, making harder. Okay, that thing that you have to solve. I we have a lot of things that we can improve and everything, but talking about evolution, I think that when we um, really, when we really uh, understand when when it it comes in a really Clear, it comes really clear that, um, for example, I'm having problem, for example, with pride. With I'm very pride. Uh, it's very important to get to this word, to get to this diagnosis, uh, to really confront it. And you should be uh, very sincere. Um, you you uh, should be very authentic with you in this research, the self-research, to really um, achieve this point, okay, of maturity, to see what the problem is and to go ahead, to go to face it, right? Because this bottlenecks, the problem is that they reduce our self-discernment. And so how can we evolve um, without thinking well, without understanding what I have to do the next step, so this is very important. And we have sometimes evolutionary self boycotts that are, that are uh, anti-cosmoetic actions, decisions that we can make here. And the self boycotts, uh, self boycotts, they have to be extinguished. We have to really face it, things, face, face this kind of things and really solve it and get rid of it. Because this is, this is uh, these things, uh, anti-cosmoethics things, they are, um, uh, they really um, uh, brings, they really, um, how could I say, they, they really um, sometimes uh, cause some kind of self-intrusion. It's very, it's kind of impossible to be anti-cosmoethic with yourself, with, um, uh, without a, without self intrusion, always you are in a moment of self intrusion. I don't know if you understand about self intrusion, but we um, we talk a lot about this kind of um, uh, condition that sometimes happen when you when you are um, stressed and when you are really. Um, um, in an imbalance, 
with your um, vehiculars, okay? With you're not a homeostatic. You are in a disease scenario. You are producing thoughts that are very toxic. Sometimes when you got you get anger and you really um, get conflictuals. This is a moment of in self intrusion. This is self intrusion. So. Anticosmoetic is a moment that you are doing something bad for you. Sometimes you you had a pseudo gain that we we can say that seems that oh that is good, but sometimes for a pleasure that or something that will attend you in a very short period, and that really will bring uh, toxicity and and a bad result. So this is a moment of self intrusion in uh, with anticosmoetic. Okay. I can see that here that uh, we have a question. I will I will read in just um, can you give an example of how we can ident identity homeostatic singularities? Sometimes we are more focused on aspects to improve and we do not realize those that are already homeostatic. Congratulations for the subject. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, sometimes we are more focused on aspects to improve and we do not realize. Very good question, Luisa, Luisa Consciencia. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Um, uh, sometimes we are very um, focused uh, in the absent traits that are the traits that we already uh, we haven't not developed it yet, and are we are concerned about our weak traits, things that we have to improve, what we need to really um, uh, get better to do that thing and everything. But I think that to identify these homeostatic singularities, it's important to see your strong traits. It's very difficult to, to discover in yourself or uh, really find in yourself homeostatic singularities. If you are looking at the, your side, that's not so okay, let's say. Uh, and this, um, this has relation to a way to live your life in a balanced way, okay? Not just seeing the, the part that you have to improve and get better, and sometimes that you feel that it's hard about that, but seeing the part that is good, I am good, I have good things today. I, what, why, what can I do today with this, this uh, good things about me? You know, you have to value the good things, uh, your strong traits, your abilities, this is very important, and this is uh, this is, is just about a decision. When you wake up, you make decision every day of your pattern, the way your to sanity will works in that day. All right. I hope I have answered it. So let's get back the slides. Um, and we have this uh, consensual multi stereological self mimesis. These astrophysical groups, uh, sometimes it's very hard to make the movement of self overcoming, self confrontation and overcoming, because we have a lot of uh, history, we could say we have a lot of experience, experiences, and we have a lot of relations. We have many, many astrophysical uh, friends. Yeah, we, I'm trying to explain in a manner. But it's kind of that kind of friends that we have from other lives that are not here with us in this life, but are in the astrophysical. And so it's a context that is um, besides us. We have this group too. And uh, sometimes it's difficult not to get in self mimesis. So we have to be aware of that too. So let's run a little bit because we have just about, I think, 11 minutes. Proexological goals. Now let's get to the proexis. The proexis is a programmation, is a program that you that you can do in uh, between two lives in the intermissive um, period. 
and you plan what you're going to do in the next life. And when you plan, you, you can put there the fundamental clause. For example, this is common, the intermissivist. It's very common to have a fundamental clause. And what's the problem here? If you don't accomplish this, you will have bad times there in the astrophysical when you um, dis discharge this, discard this soma. And when you, when uh, when it happened, when you you change from this from the intraphysical to the extraphysical, that happens when the person die, right? Uh, you you can experience a, a very hard time when you see that you you seem uh, you couldn't uh, um, accomplish that. Okay, something that was really important that I should do, that uh, was uh, the thing that I came here in this life to do. And sometimes uh, this kind of the praxis has relation with group to do in group. Sometimes a person uh, didn't achieve the group, uh, didn't find a uh, place that the place that um, this consciousness should act. And you just, you lose this opportunity to accomplish and to do it. And this brings uh, melancholy on the extraphysical, okay? And in inter interphysical too, if the person see, feels that is an intermissivist, that feels that really planted something, sometimes you can have the melancholy here in the interphysical. And the evolutionary intelligence can act here when you self organize self organize yourself uh, sorry self organize your routine focus focus it on the proaxis and you can do that you can you can organize what is uh, really uh, what is uh, really the priority in this life in my life Oh, the priority is to do this kind of thing. So you have to put that in front of everything. This is uh, being um, using your evolutionary intelligence. So you can do this. You can program. You can organize things here in the intraphysical to accomplish things that you already planted um, in 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 astrophysical when in this inter intermissive period. And we have the self recycling aiming the conscientious completism. The completism is this condition when we, we decimate and, and leave this body here and go to the astrophysical multidimension and we accomplish and we feel completist, okay? We have this completism. So we can, we can organize, we can do our self-recycling Leave out, leave behind this bottleneck. Get rid of all this kind of problem and things that stuck yourself, stuck your evolution and everything. When you do that, you are more, you are, uh, you feel uh, free. You feel um, more open it to do your praxis with um, uh, lesser problems. We could say dimin dimin diminished problems, diminished things, conflicts, we, and you feel more prepared to go ahead to do what you came to do because that that things that were more um, more gross we could say things more the difficult part you left behind you solve it let's go to the other one please and uh, i'm putting in test this technique is consciential bullarion technique so this is a technique of self-confrontation. We have a, a lot of techniques already described it. And this one um, I'm testing now with myself. So you can put there, it's like a bullarium. Uh, this will give a lot of information of you about your singularities. And there you can put your name, age, the strong traits, the weak traits, the absent traits, the mega strong trait, the mega weak trait, the mega absent trait, self-diagnosis, the matter tocin, that is this tocin that um, is the most predominant one in your routine, in your daily life, 
the prexological uh, prexological mega focus, self intrusion, thosenic triggers. What makes you think? What what's what you're thinking, or what things you think that makes uh, self intrusion that generates self intrusion in you? Self de intrusion techniques, things that you are that you know that you can do, like for example, put uh, put a music, listen to a music, or go and and watch a um, television or a movie that you know that when you do that you feel good you just relax and you are not concerned anymore but i'm talking here not everything okay not um not with all or every content i'm talking about things that you know like a example classical music or okay another music pop music whatever but that that one that you know that you're very homeostatic when you do that and take you out of that moment of, of um, self-intrusion, okay? But we have uh, techniques uh, using energy to describe it in conscientiology, conscientia therapy, that you can use to really deal with and solve the problem of self-intrusion at the moment, all right? We have self-confrontation techniques you should put in the Bolarion too that you're um, using now and that you uh, that really uh, fits in your plan there to confront the self-diagnosis. Contential prognosis, you should be very um, authentic here with you. What, what you think you can achieve, um, like really achieve and not something like uh, that it's out of of things that you know that you can do that is feasible, right? Self overcoming signs you can put there too, and conscientious prophylaxis things that you should uh, put to like this is a prophylaxis not to get in the problem, not to not to to really get out of your mind with something or to lo to lo uh, lose control. Okay, you should have your prophylaxis. Let's go to the other one, please. Now I think we are we are in the very end. Um, talking about OIC. Here we have a picture of some of our volunteers here in the campus. Um, so OIC is a conscientious centric institution, nonprofit, based on volunteer work scientific and non-politic and um, uh, based on conscientious therapeuticology. And uh, our goal here is the research, clarification, and dissemination of the speciality. And it was founded in 2003. Uh, so next one, please. Our next free lecture is with uh, Regina Esterman, Lucid Detachment. Um, July 3, Saturday at the same time, here in our channel. Feel free to join us in this next free lecture. Let's go on, please. And we have self conscientious therapy consultation. That is a personalized online meeting with two conscientious therapists. You can um, schedule on our website, so feel free to schedule and to and to exper uh, experiment, right? To experience, sorry, uh, the uh, the consultation, the heteroconscientious therapy. If you want to learn more, if you want to experiment with um, by yourself, so this is our invitation. And so, um, next one, please. This is our English website. We have many articles there that uh, are everything translated, everything in English. And um, it's very interesting to deepen in self-research. Uh, there are a lot of informations. Next one. So our, some of our volunteers here in the campus, 
Um, so uh, you are very welcome to come here and visit us. We are in this pandemic now, but here it's very beautiful with a lot of nature here in Foz do Iguaçu. We have attendances um, here in Foz do Iguaçu, presential attendances, and in Sao Paulo, too, and Rio de Janeiro, too. And um, we are very open to... Um, uh, to you, to uh, whenever you need some help or have some doubt about this topic, about conscientia therapy, conscientiology, okay? So thank you very much and have a nice day.